morning to you. This morning I have something very encouraging for you. God's been speaking to me quite a lot. I, be I believe God is speaking to me a lot out of the story of Lazarus again, that he wants to resurrect some dreams, resurrect our hope and our vision. And I'm digging into that to see what the real message is, because I've preached on the book of out of the story of Lazarus quite a lot. And so there must be something more. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. When I keep getting reminded of something in the Bible, I go back to it and I read it again. And I think, but I've read this before. And I know if I can't let it go, there's something God is saying to me. And I know a lot of people need hope. A lot of people feel that their situation is so bad, nothing can change or happen again. And God is wanting to resurrect some things in our lives. And so... The story of Lazarus you can find in John 11. I'm just going to give you a couple of thoughts now, not the full message. But um, in John 11, we find that Jesus is somewhere else when the message comes to him that Lazarus has died. The two sisters, Mary and Martha, send the message to say it, and he delays. And then in verse 4, it says, when Jesus heard that, he said, this is why he delayed, the sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And then in verse 5, it just adds this. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And then when he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days. So, so naturally we think that if he loved the sisters and he loved Lazarus so much that he would jump up straight away, get an Uber to where he had to be and just sort the situation out. But he delayed and the reason was, he said, this sickness is not unto death. He had inside information. He knew what was going on. And a lot of people, when we're in a situation where we feel that everything is dying around us, the situation is hopeless, we're calling out to God and we say, God, why are you delaying? And God is a perfect time for everything and a perfect way of doing things. And so then he, so remember this, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And so that message would somehow have got through to Mary and Martha because we hear as they are standing in front of the tomb in John chapter 11 in verse from verse 38 they're standing in front of the tomb and Jesus says take away the stone and it was Martha who said to him by this time there's a stench for he has been dead four days and I'm sure in her the tone of her voice and her mannerisms, her attitude would have come across. Because she already said, if you were here, a brother wouldn't have died. Both sisters said that to him. And so standing here, facing an impossibility, would have been in the tone of her voice. You know, he's been dead for four days. How can he say, roll away the stone? And then this is the reply that Jesus gives to her. In verse 40, he says, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. And then we know what happens. They take away the stone. And so that reply to Jesus is what has been sticking with me for days. The reply Jesus gave to Martha. Did I not say that if you would believe? He didn't say, did I not say that if you would give more money? If you would dance around in your lounge? If you would pray more? If you would do this you know we put a whole lot of standards on ourselves when we're facing an impossible situation all he said was believe and so that word believe is a huge key in this day to to bring us hope and to bring us um, this this peace that we need in when we're facing an impossible situation did i not say if you would just believe so that word believe means obviously to have faith in to entrust and to credit and then when I read that, I thought about the story of Jairus, this is very similar, well, actually the same situation where they're walking on the road and, and they're on the way to Jairus's house. And Jairus gets the report that his daughter, his 12 year old daughter who was sick, has now died. And the people from the house came and said, don't bother the teacher anymore. And Jesus said, do not fear, only believe. And it's the same root word in trust, credit and, and have faith in me now. In other words, don't put your faith in the fear because, you know, that doesn't work. <laughs> don't get your focus on the fear and trust me now. Give me some credit now. Have faith in me because I'm the one who can resurrect the situation. And so I really believe this is what God is saying to a lot of people in this season. He wants us to focus on him. You've heard me say that hundreds, maybe millions of times by now. Focus on him. Put our faith in him. Trust in him. Uh, don't 
try and do a whole works program to prove that you have faith. All he's saying is believe. He's standing in front of an impossible situation and he's saying, believe me today. And so when the enemy says it's over, all God says is believe. And there's something that happens when we believe, when we entrust him with the, the situation to him. We hand over the situation to him. We say, God, I believe. You said all I have to do is believe. And I, I, I don't have the strength or the wisdom or the know-how to do anything else. So I'm going to believe you. And then as we position ourselves in belief, in faith, in giving him some credit in this moment of, I need something to change, then he begins to release instructions to us. And he begins to give us peace. That's the most important thing. Because until you get to the place where you say, God, I believe, there's no peace. There's this wrestling and trying to over and over analyzing things and trying to reason things out and work out a plan. And God says, first, believe. And so there's a scripture in Ephesians 3 that says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. In other words, anything we need him to do, give us an answer. Turn a situation around. Send provision. Give us the breakthrough. And then it says, according to the power that works in us. And that little phrase has got a lot of people caught up in works programs or in condemnation. Because they say, yes, God is able to do over and above, but he hasn't done it yet. So obviously I don't have enough faith. And so we get things flipped around and we, we try and prove we have faith by doing more giving more, praying more. Now, if God has told you to give more, be obedient to that instruction. If God has told you to pray more, be obedient. But remember, our starting point is believing God and only doing what he gives us to do because that's the key. And so the devil will say to you, if you read Ephesians 3, the devil will say to you, the power that works in you isn't working at all. You know, that power that it speaks about is dunamis. In other words, miracle working dynamite power that we have because the holy spirit dwells within us but it's like having a stick of dynamite and until you light it you know you see in the old well in the movies you light it and it's got a little piece of rope that leads to the actual dynamite so what we do is we have this dynamite inside of us but it doesn't get lit so it's a stick of dynamite and god says he can do over and above what we can ask or think if we will just believe. Jesus said to Martha, did I not say that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And what he was saying is, if you would just believe me now, that I'm the one who's able to resurrect Lazarus, you're going to see the miracle working power in operation, and God will be glorified right here. And it's the same in your situation. So how do we get the stick of dynamite to actually start to operate? How do we get it to be active within us, because it says here, the power that works within us, so the miracle dynamite power that needs to be activated within us, is what's going to enable God to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now your situation may look dead today, but God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask to think, once that ask or think. So we need to get that miracle working power activated within us, and that's the power of the Spirit of God. And how do we get it activated within us? Believing. Step number one. Start at step number one until he gives you number two, if there is a number two. Number three, number four. Obeying the leading of the Spirit of God. And the first thing the Spirit of God will lead you to do is believe. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in, in the miracle working God, in the God who can do exceedingly abundantly. So then we are, when, we, we, when that miracle working power is activated by putting our faith in God, then there's an expectation. And then we see when Jesus said, roll away the stone, we say, now I can see clearly, I can see the situation that the devil said is dead. But when I put my faith in God, anything is possible. So our faith in God puts the miracle working power to work. We're not sitting back saying, oh God, I know you're able to do this, which is a good thing to say if you need him to do something. But we say, God, it's not faith in my own works. It's faith in what Jesus had, has done. And I give you credit today. I, I remember the testimonies you've done. I, I remember the stories I've heard about how you delivered other people. And you did it for them so you can do it for me. So get that 
dynamite miracle working power active in your life today instead of sitting back and saying oh wait for God get it active by saying God I put my faith in you go and read the story of Lazarus until God speaks to you and he encourages you that when the enemy says it's over God says it's never over until I say so so put your faith in God today and be encouraged with that